Welcome everyone to the video. In this one, I'm going to cover how I do my equations when I'm calculating for future characters. And I'm also going to go through and show you how you can do the most damage using the equation that the game gives you. I want to show you this equation in game. Yes, this is what I can hit on my encore. The numbers may not match up one for one. That is mainly because I did not defense in depth. It should be a way bigger number like 0 0.504 and all that extra shit. Also, there's a bunch of hidden decimals in the game that don't show you. So as long as you're in roughly 99% correct, I'd say that's a success. The video may be longer than usual, so look at all the timestamps I have down. If you don't even want to watch the whole thing, you have a summary. It'll get everything you want to know in about four minutes. So let's move on. Let's talk about dimension returns. Dimension returns hap occurs when you have too much in one part of the equation. What that means is if I keep pumping damage bonus, I will start losing out on the increase that it gives. So the first 30% I pump on my Encore, that's going to be a 14.7% uh, increase. Next time I'd give it myself 30% damage bonus, that'll be a roughly 12% damage increase. Then if I try to do it again, that'll lead to an 11% damage increase. Now, instead of working the exact same damage bonus, I can put all that effort into getting something that gives attack. Instead of getting an 11% increase, I'll now be looking at a 14% increase. And this is what I mean when I say diminishing returns. I stopped pouring water on this part of the equation and I start spreading it out to the attack. And that's roughly what you want to do. We don't have the choice of spreading out the love to a bunch of other things, but we do have the ability to share stuff from damage bonus to attack. I can change from damage bonus and get more defense red or damage bonus and give it to crit. We can choose from damage bonus and attack. So that's where we have, that's how we have to split it up. Now to raise your motion value, you already know how to raise your motion value, right? I don't need to say it. There's two ways. Level, level up your talents or get a sequence that'll raise it for you. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to move on quickly. Looking at attributes, every character scales with something different. Pao Chi, Yan Wu will scale with defense, while Encore will scale with attack. Here's your three attributes. To find your base, you open up the game menu and you look at the white number. If you don't have a menu to use, you can simply add a base character's attack or any of their base stats with the weapon. The weapon only can give base attack though. So if you're playing an attack character, add your base attack from them and add it to the weapon and that is your total base attack. Everything will now scale off that number. The reason you need to still know this is because some buffs are not going to show up on the sheet. Right? Conditional buffs such as the Jinzo Keeper giving Baiji the additional 10% HP will not show up on the screen. So the way I like to handle this is I take my base HP and I will multiply it by the percent increase here, 10%. That is a 0.1. I get this number here once I run that through. And then I like to take this number and I'll add it to what the game shows me. 21093. That leaves me with this number here. It's very useful when you're calculating for characters that are not out because you have nothing in front of you to look at. You have to do everything in your head or on a calculator. Moving past the attributes, you have crit multiplier. Bunch of numbers and shit on your screen. Just give me a second. It's really not that complicated. You can get crit multiplier by taking your crit rate and multiplying it by your crit damage. That is crit multiplier. What crit multiplier is, is average damage. So if you don't want to get your average damage and get the damage you'll do on a crit, you simply replace crit multiplier in the equation and put your crit damage number. For me, it would be 2.378. Looking at my crit value, you'll see that it's 63.5 over 137.8. Now in game, it says 237.8. What I've done here is basically I've removed one from, or removed a hundred from this equation. That's because Wuthering Waves sneaks in that, not sneaks in, but puts in that 100 flat you're going to always do. They don't put this in any other damage bonus uh, anywhere else, right? They don't have it in on your uh, damage bonus, on your fusion damage, they don't have it anywhere. But they do for some reason have it on crit damage. Uh, Genshin Impact does this, does not do this as well. So this is like the first game that I've seen that does this. But moving on, the golden rule is going to be you want to have one crit rate for every two crit damage or two crit damage for every crit rate. 
Doing so will give you the best average damage you can possibly get. Now, I have 240 crit value, which is, I'd say, average to low tier. And that is going to lead you to a 60 crit rate to 120 crit damage. Right? If you can split up 240 crit value, that, this is the best you can get. Now, this is going to lead me with a crit multiplier of 1.72. And will be calculated in here. We have an average of 984 and a critical strike of 1258. Now, if somehow, let's just say you wanted more crit damage, that means you would have to remove 10 crit rate. And that means you get 20 crit damage. As one crit rate is equal to two crit damage. With that being done, you have the exact same crit value as before, but your crit multiplier goes down. With your crit multiplier going down, that only means your average damage goes down. But your critical strike damage will go up. You know what I'm saying? And if you do it the other way around, where if you take from crit damage and give it to crit rate, your average will go up, your crit strike damage will go down. So a good place for them both to sit is by giving them both you know, 1 to 2, and they both move up roughly the same. Moving on to the next one, we have enemy defense. Very easy way to do enemy defense in an equation is instead of doing this big ass number here, whole equation, I simply do 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is a really good spot to sit at because either when you're a higher level than an enemy and you fight him, you're going to do less damage to him, roughly 1%. If you're a lower than an enemy and you try to fight him, you're going to do more damage to him, 1% you know, more. But if you're the same level, you're going to do half damage, 50%. Right? This is the sweet spot here. So by putting in 0.5, you can never be that incorrect. You'll be you'll be off by like a number, uh, a number or two, but you'll still be in the same ballpark. Now, what I've shown here is my Encore's basic attack, ignoring 15% of the enemy's defense. But that gives me a 0.54 instead of a 0.5. Ignoring 15% of the enemy defense means that I will do 8% more damage. Now, the problem with defense shredding is the number is so small, 0.5, that getting defense shred in such small numbers as well, such as 15%, is going to mean it'll be pretty hard to get this number up to somewhere good. So... Yeah, we have Chang Li so far in the game with the only defense red being 15%, and then you can get some more in S6, but I ain't gonna be talking about all that. Moving on, we hear of damage bonus here. Damage bonus is a spot where a lot of people like to tunnel vision it and pump too much because they don't know how it works. But to simplify it, you're going to add your fusion damage or your element bonus of that character plus the skill you're calculating. For me, it's basic attack. So I'll take my element, which is fusion. Then I'll take the skill that I'm doing, basic attack. So I'll take this. Those get added, and that's my damage bonus total there. Other sources from the outside, such as the turtle, the bell turtle, and the havoc bird, can also show up. Those give damage bonus, and that fits in right here as well. That you can decide to put that damage bonus, whether a part of your fusion or your skill but you can only add it to one, which will all lead up to this number being increased by that number once. But once again, that is all additive. Too much of this means that you're going to have some pretty heavy diminishing returns and also lets you see that you don't really need crazy substats with damage bonus on it, right? When you have a 100% damage bonus from just your echo alone, you know, two, uh, 230 pieces plus the set bonus, Getting 8% on a roll on your echo is not that crazy, right? It's going to give you little to no damage. So don't be stressing over that. Moving on after damage bonus, you have elemental resistance. Every enemy in this game will take 10% less damage from all elements. And then they'll take 40% less from the element that they are super resistant to. You can find out that by looking up online, and I'm sure you'll find a wiki of um, a site showing you all enemies resistances. But since they have 10% resistance, that means we only deal 90% of our damage. That's why I have a 0.9 here. Now, if I can somehow shred that 90%, that means I would go up to a 1.1. Now, how that's done is 10% resistance to shred means I'm now doing all the damage to the enemy. And then an additional 10% means 
he's taking more damage from me right i overshred him that's going to lead me to a 22.2 percent damage increase which is very crazy i put in 20 percent shred and i got 22 percent damage bonus on my like overall which is very crazy now the only shredding i know in the game is spectral rover but i didn't really look too much so people that are playing Jinsi, look into spectral rover very good support for you i have a video on it as well interested. looking at damage deepen i believe this is the most important part of whatever team you're playing whatever you're using there is a deepen for it and i think you should really really put this deepen in not think but i know you need to have deepen in now the exception being that tauchi is a little unplayable to some people they don't like the way she feels so they're going to sacrifice the 38 percent skill deepen because she doesn't really fit into a rotation and she could be causing you to lose damage because of how long it takes her to get in but other characters such as varina and baiji giving you a 15 percent deep into everything and senhua giving me a basic attack deepen even yinlin giving you a very broken deepen 20 percent to electro and then 25 percent to alt leading up to a 45 percent alt deepen is going to be very powerful now deepen shows up at the end of the equation so a 38 percent deepen means i'm literally going to do 38 percent more damage that is how strong a deepen is this deepen is supposed to make up for there being no elemental reactions in the game right genshin impact did the same thing where reactions were multiplicative of everything i guess this is this game's way of doing it so to summarize everything up do you really want your damage to be maximum or as high as it can be you need to spread out uh, all the effort you're putting into a character evenly amongst everything if you are using a skill character make sure you have damage bonus on skills but not uh, not so much damage bonus to where you're giving up attack make sure your, your skills are leveled up obviously and make sure you're also using a one to two crit multiplier or crit ratio one crit rate for two crit damage Make sure you have a deepen on your character for whatever you're using we cannot do anything about enemy defense yet enemy res elemental resistance i feel like is coming very soon maybe even next patch once you have all that taken care of you'll be doing the best damage you can um i believe i explained everything i want to explain in this video you can see everything you want uh for the equation and where to put it in this video if you have any comments feel free to leave it down below this is my first time trying to make a video this with this much information in it so i wouldn't be surprised if i messed up somewhere but yeah hope you found it informative and peace